You know, one of the challenges for the development of truly autonomous drive vehicles, a vehicle that might start somewhere, pick you up at your home, and then drop you off at a business, is knowing what the vehicle should be doing at all times, what happens if it gets confused. So we're here at Phantom Auto in Mountain View, California. They believe that they have the answer here. Coming up here is a Phantom Auto test vehicle. Now, there is no driver in this vehicle. They're going to drive up. They're going to pick me up. And let me give you a sense of what this is all about. Inside, we have a second shot of a remote operator. This is called telepresence. And Ben, you're our remote operator. This is what happens if there's not a driver in the vehicle. He takes control and tells the vehicle what to do. Here's how it works. We're taking off now in a Phantom Auto test car. This car is being remote controlled, which means there's nobody in the driver's seat. There is, however, a remote operator. Welcome, Phil. My name is Ben, and I will be your phantom remote operator for this drive. When you're sitting in one of these cars and the remote operation is taking place, it feels like an autonomous drive vehicle with one key difference. There is somebody who actually is driving the car, albeit by remote control. Ben Shuckman, the remote operator, sees what the car sees. So it's almost as if Ben is sitting in the driver's seat. Right now we're at a four-way stop. Ben can see all the cars and the traffic around here, and he's making the turn. As someone who has gone for a number of rides in autonomous drive vehicles, riding in a remote operated vehicle doesn't feel a whole lot different. What's the appeal? It's those tricky situations where you come across a construction site. For a lot of autonomous drive vehicles, that creates confusion. That's where Phantom Auto steps in. A remote operator like Ben can take control and steer the vehicle where it needs to go. Back live in Mountain View, we are in the Phantom Auto test vehicle, and you can see that Ben is controlling where we are going. Now, Phantom Auto believes this is the key for handling those tricky situations, a construction site, a driveway that is blocked and the vehicle doesn't know where to go. If there's nobody in the vehicle, if you're just riding in an autonomous drive vehicle, you will need somebody to take control, and Phantom Auto believes telepresence is the way that can be done. Believe me, others are looking at this technology. This may be the key to solving some of those tricky situations that will ultimately be popping up when it comes to autonomous drive vehicles really being out in the world and picking people up day in, day out. Phil, how, how do they know that this is coming? Is this a guy who's supposed to be managing a fleet of 10 or 15 or 20 cars? And how quickly do you get notified and jump two, in? And what does the car do in the meantime? Does it just right. sit there and idle until? There's, there's two, two things, Becky. One is, as a passenger, I can see Ben. So if I see that we're coming up on construction and the vehicle starts to slow down, I can hit a button and say, hey, somebody needs to help me out. My vehicle is stopped here at a construction site. Also, the vehicle will communicate with the operator or the operation center. And their goal is to set up a number of these call centers around the country, around the world. So if you're in Los Angeles and you run into a construction site in an autonomous drive vehicle, there is a call center, no different than a call center for any other type of company, where there's an operator like Ben sitting at a cockpit who he could step in within a matter of, you know, 15, 20 seconds. Hey there, thanks for checking out CNBC on YouTube. Be sure to subscribe to stay up to date on all of the day's biggest stories. You can also click on any of the videos around me to watch the latest from CNBC. Thanks for watching.